I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. My beginner's kit for Battletech arrived. Oh, right on. It's pretty cool. The uh, It comes with a, a Wolverine and a Griffin. Okay. They're pretty cool. Um, the The... I, I found the uh, Total War, no, Battletech, a game of armored com- combat Yeah. as well online. So I picked that up too. So that'll be arriving Sweet. probably in the next week. Yeah. So I'll have 1632 max. Holy crap. Plus some, uh, yeah. That's plus a some bunch. standees. Which, no, yeah. no. So each, each lance is four max. Right. Oh yeah. So if you play if you play Alpha Strike, usually you're playing with eight mechs because you uh-huh. play with two lances. But yeah. if you're playing standard battle tech, you typically play with one lance. Oh, or shit. if you're playing with clans, yeah. they're called um stars. Sweet. And two stars is called a binary. Clans <laughs> Clans naming is really good. The only problem and I've been I've been like looking into which faction I want to paint my minis based on. Yeah, because I wanna I wanna follow War to paint them, mm-hmm. and I basically decided that I don't want to go. I want to f- find a sweet spot between between Succession Wars and Clan Invasion because that's when the tech is not complete nonsense. Yeah, <laughs> um, but the problem is, uh, every time I read about a group in the BattleTech universe, I'm like, yeah. oh, these guys are cool. And then I'll read the next paragraph, and it's uh-huh. like, and then they committed genocide. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, maybe not so cool. It'll get you every time. I mean, right now, I'm not going to lie, my current favorite is probably Clan Sea Boxes. Yeah. Mainly because they're just merchants. So they're okay. basically the Quarians from, La- uh, from Mass Effect, yeah. as far as I can tell. Cool. Like they literally say that they smell better because they live in <laughs> sterile environments. Right on. Shoot, I've got nothing, nothing much new going on. I got, I finally got a good bandsaw blade, so I, I swapped out my bandsaw blades and tuned them up because I had a, a spree of I ordered some and they came in like messed up. There, they, there are kinks in them and this such. And I was like, ah, that sucks. So I finally got that installed, tuned everything up. Nice. It's working great. Uh, I got, it's mostly done. I'm making, um, a template so I can start working on the guitar neck. Nice, um, nice. Yeah. So it came out great. Still got all my fingers. That's good. Um. It, oh, and if, if you're interested in Brandon's guitar, you should totally check out his YouTube. Yes. Which, 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 what is your YouTube now? Cause I remember your old one and I won't, I won't say it for the sake of people not seeing Gorilla's <laughs> stick figure. Um, um Okay. So the way YouTube works right now, they assign because old YouTube you could sort of just right off the bat choose your your link. New YouTube yeah. you need a number of subscribers. So right now it's a crazy number of characters. So okay. if you are interested, oh one oh yeah, you guys probably don't know this. Uh, in my free time, I build myself guitars uh, yeah. from scratch using mostly hand tools, minimal minimal power tools. I still use some because I <laughs> try to cut out a body with a coping saw. It, do it once and in and and you switch to a bandsaw very fast. Um but yeah, you can see that boyerbeak.com, B O Y E R the letter B dot com. Um I, I have much on linked. there. I've got uh a video so for the my current build I'm recording as I go and uploading that for future reference for my my, my next build and if anyone wants to make their own they could use it as a guide. And mm-hmm. for my other build I've got pictures um up there like a slideshow and i don't know if the build before that if i actually have anything recorded or not but yeah no it's cool it's fun stuff having seen these guitars in person they're gorgeous works of art is all i'm gonna say why thank you 
the the purple one's probably my favorite. So. Yeah, I like uh, it. it. It's my that, favorite one currently. It's good. It's so gorgeous. The inlays are beautiful. <laughs> We've got um uh, for the curious. I'll keep this brief because you can go deep into like guitar stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it's an ash body with a flamed ambrosia top that I put onto it, and I stained it uh, a deep purple, and uh, it fades. Uh, to darker purple at the edges natural binding it's got a um a, a charred maple neck with the flame bird's eye maple neck with the flame maple fretboard and the uh the inlays on the headstock i put my signature i read my signature and filled that in with aluminum and then on the fretboard i put uh here here's cryptopedia um uh tradition plug another podcast i put the symbol from the adventure zone on the 12th fret i put that in there with purple uh mica (laughs) we give so much free advertising out to people oh yeah but it's okay oh yeah (laughs) (laughs) well everyone likes podcasts you know we're just sharing what we like i mean i don't know if everyone likes podcasts but i have the feeling that most people who listen to this probably enjoy podcasts i feel like the venn diagram of people who listen to cryptopedia and people who like podcasts, that there's a really big overlap in there. <laughs> probably. Probably. <sighs> oh, man. Um, I should note, uh, in case people were wondering why last week's episode was on Thunderbirds and not the part two of Skinwalkers, uh, it's an artifact of how we record episodes. It is. I think I left some yeah. of that in in the intro of uh, the part two, and we were just like, okay. so wh- whose turn is it then, since this is a part two? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's about it. For, in general, I get the odds, John gets the evens, yeah. and um, we can do back-to-back part twos if that's already written. If we need time, we could split them up. Yeah. Um, yeah. And- uh, it's just hard to talk. If we if we did them back to back, I'm very happy. I was like, uh, I can do both, but do you want to do yours? Because the the original length for that one was an hour and a half, and I anticipate the original length of this one will be similar. So just three hours of talking is it's a lot. Yeah, I mean the other thing too is we try to keep our each episode as atomic as possible. Yeah. Where we can weave them in and out, and usually, generally speaking, if we're doing a part two to an episode, it's not because the story is two parts, but because there's so many stories. Oh yeah. There's so many stories. There's so much information. Um, it was going to be a long one. And then after I hit 22 pages, I I was like, I should probably start (laughs) thinking about splitting this up. Yeah. But anywho, um, I'm sure everyone's very eager to get into, uh, the continuation of, I don't think so. You know, I think really we get listeners for our extremely long intros because everyone thinks, man, I wish I know they're at 10 minutes, but can they do a 20 minute intro? And I think that's really what they want. You know what the fact of the matter is, Brandon? Yeah. We can do a 20 minute intro and we kind of did a 20 minute intro last week before we probably cut it down. Oh, yeah. I haven't. I haven't. I haven't listened to to last week's episode yet because I like to listen to them before I put them up. Uh huh. So then that way I have it as fresh in my mind as possible when I write the copy. Uh huh. Um, but I distinctly remember seeing like the half hour mark before we actually <laughs> started recording. Oh yeah, that's true. Well, I think both of us thought the other person was going to start, so we we're like, all right, let's just go for it. Um, with that said, I will say, welcome. To Cryptopedia, the podcast where each week your hosts report on their discoveries of cryptids, folklore, and the paranormal from their secret underground research facility. This is my first actual uh, Cryptopedia uh, intro. Not just to spoof on another podcast. I felt like I should probably do that once. I, I, I'm probably going to be doing that in the future as well, too. Because my, <laughs> my well of, of podcast pun names has dried up quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, I've got a hundred and some odd podcasts that I, that I keep in my playlist that I listen to, but not all of them lend themselves to puns. No, no. If I got a good pun, I'll make it. So, in another uh, tradition-breaking thing, I'm not going to give you information or ask you to guess. We'll just outright say this is part two of Skinwalkers. We're covering Skinwalkers this week. If you have not listened to episode one, don't worry about it. It's all good. These are two 
distinctly different types of skinwalker if you want you can go back and listen to it or pause this and go back but it's it's not required you don't need to have any of that previous information uh already to listen to this so and if you're wondering that was episode 19 yes and i have already i can guarantee i've already forgotten like 90 percent of that did you that's the way it works for me <laughs> i think i remember oh. something about navajo witchcrafts and yep. the dene people which yep so so what, quick what quick yeah. recreat one uh navajo the, uh, this is for if you have not listened to it navajo not their name the name people named them uh because they said hey we're gonna kill all of you and take your land so they call themselves dene general rule of thumb gonna stick with that unless i'm giving a direct quote Number two, Navajo witchcraft. That's what they call it, so I can say the same thing because it's a quote. Um, uh, I do want to point out that that is a slippery slope. It's very slippery. I, that's, we're, that's, it's, a, that's, that's, that's threading the needle pretty hard. We're threading the needle. I think everyone knows it's all like it's the, there's the intention behind the statement. So I think that at least between us and the listeners like that, we're, we know what the intent is. If um, there's someone who's Danae listening, though, and wants to chime in, by all means, add us on Twitter. Oh, yeah, I'm open for, for corrections and the polite, yeah. hey, you fucked up. Uh, that's fine we'll by try, me. But we'll we, so publish, we covered yeah. that witchcraft. We broke it into four distinct parts and um, how that applies to the skinwalker, my air quotes traditional skinwalker, which was a medicine man that dealt primarily with the dead and dying. And this... Part two is what I'm calling, you can't see it, but I'm doing air quotes, modern skinwalkers. These are evil individuals who have the literal power to transform into animals. So is this, so this whole episode is just literally going to be people taking Native American folklore literally, which um, for the next episode I'm doing is a serious problem. Oh, I believe it. Well, this, th there is also, we'll see more when we get in, but I believe that there was the, again, air quote, traditional skinwalker. That's not the right way, but it's the easiest way for me to, to, to make that distinction. Mm -hmm. I believe that as lore built around that, the Dene people themselves have, that's a big generalization. There are people who think that this is now the act, what the skinwalker is itself, even within that culture. Okay. Um, okay, which is pretty dope, right? That it's we're seeing things grow over time. I mean, that's the evolution of myth. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so rather than start my research here by reading the sources um, at the bottom and all that, I started by watching an interview with an individual named Chief Dan. He said, "Okay, yeah, <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's uh... Chief Dan." The video's in the link. He's Chief Dan, man. So, I haven't seen the video yet. Chief Dan is a Dene, a member of the Dene, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. But, like, actually officially recognizes a member of the Dene, right? Oh, yeah, no, the interview with him okay. takes place okay. on a reservation, and he's get, okay. telling stories from his childhood. There, there's a part of me... So, in my family's lore... Yeah. Um, There's a lot of things in my family's lore, but... One of the things that's in my family's lore is that we're uh, Blackfoot, Native American. Uh huh. I personally don't believe that because the only reason that we believe that was because there was a picture of one of our like ancestors in a headdress. Well, and if that is how lineage is defined, my grandchild will think they're Port Mouse because there will be an image of their ancestor with Mickey. Yeah. I mean, you might be part mouse. It's true. I, I did I some weird stuff. It. I went to college. <laughs> That's what college is for. Oh, yeah. So Chief Getting Dan, mice in your jeans, apparently. <laughs> J-E-A-N-S. <laughs> yeah, and then G-E-N-E-S. That's how it works. You get in the yeah. jeans, then you're in the jeans. Yeah, it's usually a problem. Usually the mice don't survive. <laughs> no, no, but they had a fun time. So no, they didn't. <laughs> no, they didn't. They died. Uh... So Chief Dan, in this interview, 
said that there are things in the night and that if they are seen, they can be in animal form, human form, or in an in-between state. Now, that I thought was really cool. The modern version of Skinwalkers, I already had an image in my head. The in-between states was not something I had sort of a mental image of. So that was cool right off the bat that he, he mentioned that. I was going to have to make this joke eventually. Yes. Are skinwalkers furries? They... Well, I don't, the furries aren't a literal transformation, because if they were, that well, would well, be a nightmare. Well, okay, here's my question. Yeah? How many furries have latched on to skinwalker lore? Did you I do any research can, on that? I can say I don't know. I okay, honestly well, don't know. You continue You continue talking about the episode. I'm going to do some... Uh, some uh tertiary episode ter- tertiary research that uh is essential okay use your uh safe search control nope. shift n for chrome because protect your cookies john protect your cookies all right well continue i am looking i am actually googling this oh Look. i believe it yeah yep. so these creatures on occasion could be sent to spy on enemy camps and report back according to dan These were people who had the knowledge to transform into any animal, and that this was more common before the Long Walk. What's the Long Walk? Oh, is that the Trail of Tears? No, that was my first thought. So it turns out we did that like a bunch. Oh, yeah, lovely. Yeah, because... We're great. We're great to humans. We're great to other humans. Yeah, so the Long Walk was the 1864 ethnic cleansing of the Diné, by the United States federal government, where they were forced to walk from what is now Arizona to New Mexico. According to Dan, for this transformation to happen, the person who wished to become a skinwalker would need to sacrifice. Along with the ability to shapeshift, they also had magical powers, and supposedly one could hire a skinwalker, and they could place a hex on someone. Which is for hire, kind of. Yeah, basically. So you could hire them to spy, you could hire them to cast a spell on somebody they had a variety of uh abilities and they would uh you could employ them to perform them for you so the, the results of this hex may result in the financial ruin a decline in health or accidents resulting in injury uh to an, a targeted individual and the person who hired them would gain whatever it was that the hexed person lost hmm okay yep so, say you hexed someone, uh, you wanted a new car because you liked this other person's new car. If you crashed their car via hex, then you would come upon a method of acquiring that car that you wanted. So, there's a, a transference that happens. Okay. Or if someone okay. becomes sick, then you'll get more healthy. So, it's equivalent exchange. Yeah. yeah. Now, be careful, though. Yes. Because those those souls, uh-huh. the, the energy that is used to power equivalent exchange, spoiler alert, comes from wars in our world. Ah. Yeah. We're talking about the uh, Full Metal Alchemist, right? Yes. Okay, yes. Just, just double we're, checking. We're, talk, we're talking about the original anime, which it gets kind of goofy towards the end. Oh, That's yeah. That's all I'm going to say. It gets weird. The disguise of the Skinwalker isn't perfect, apparently. There is frequently something a little bit off with the appearance of the animal, or something wrong about how it moves. The skinwalkers must be aware of their imperfect disguises, because Dan goes on to describe that they will frequently hide very quickly if more than just a couple people look at it at a time. And because of this, if you hear your dogs barking at night or your cats acting weird, that's because they see a skinwalker and know it for what it is. So... Here's my question. Yeah. Um, is this just a is this just a way to warn about animals with rabies? Because if if an animal's behaving weird strangely, that mm-hmm. might be something with rabies, and it's probably a good idea to kill it. Maybe. I'm not entirely sure. I'm gonna say I don't think so, because this version of the skinwalker Mm-hmm. is incredibly modern. <clears throat> okay. Like this is post uh post long walk. This is like late 1800s. So, okay, mid, so it wouldn't mid be mid 1900s. It wouldn't be like a a myth for the sake of education. 
Yeah, yeah. At least okay. for from what I was able to find in my sources, there might be other stuff out there. Again, this particularly this it was difficult finding good sources on. But from what I found, that this version was an incredibly modern version of the Skinwalker, um, and I think that's okay. in part because there are no like medicine men aren't a common thing. They're not. It's not a frequent or as frequent as it would have been. And because yeah. of that, I think there's the legend of the skinwalker out there, but not necessarily the same type of medicine person around to do that. So that let this lore sort of explode into this other thing uh, more recently. Okay. Yep. All right. <clears throat> Just checking. If you ever come face to face with a skinwalker, especially in the daylight, he said that there is a powder they will blow on you, and this could cause temporary this... Did you just get sprayed in the in the tongue by a skinwalker? Because it sounds like you. You know, I think I did. My cat's giving me two fingers right now, so I think she is a skinwalker. All right. Well, you should probably deal with that. Yeah. This could cause temporary paralysis, allowing them to get away, or it may kill you immediately or slowly. But the death won't look like a murder. It would likely look like a heart attack or that you choked on something you were eating. Do skinwalkers have death notes? Maybe. I think the death note in this case is the check that you write to the skinwalker. Yeah, it's probably true. I mean, oh, God, that's like the fifth reference to an anime I've made this episode. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I got to I got to I got to I got to get under. I got to get in check. I've been just I've been consuming so much anime and manga lately. Oh, it's good I, though. I'm slowly dying. I just I, I just read oh. 90 chapters of a new manga. Did you? Holy crap. I just In binged like two days. All of that one that you told me about and I didn't forget the name. I'm intentionally not saying the name. That's fair. And then I started season 2 of A Good Place, which is pretty good. Yeah, I my favorite uh what's her name? Uh Darcy Oh, what's her last name? Uh, the person who plays Janet is probably yeah. one of my favorite actresses ever. Now. Janet is so good. She's so good. <laughs> not a girl. Nope. Not a robot. <laughs> yeah, she's like that. Uh, uh, I'm going to avoid doing Janet quotes because I just ran through three in my head. And to me, they were funny. To the listeners, I don't think so. That's fair. If you think that you've become afflicted by this powder... Either by it being blown on you or slipped into your food or drink, you should immediately consume something that Dan called bitter medicine. Um, and from uh, this point, he described bitter medicine. He didn't necessarily know what it was, but it sounded like bitter medicine was what, something you could get from another medicine man. So mm -hmm. if you think you're afflicted, go to your medicine man. He'll provide you something called better, bitter medicine. And then okay. you, you should consume it. I guess it smells a little bit like sage, or that sage could be used to also fight the effects of this powder. Which, by the way, reference to episode one, would be the corpse powder from the second type of witchcraft. Okay, yeah. Yep. I mean, that, that makes sense. Sage is used in a lot of uh, ritual purification and stuff like that, so. Yes, yeah. Even to this day, like, it's it's been co-opted by uh, New Age philosophers, yeah. So, um, I'll, I'll believe that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, now going back to your question from part one. Um, and that is, you asked something roughly like, so what did the Dene do about the skinwalkers or these witches? Were they accepted into society or yeah. were they shunned? Were they sort of this weird thing? Um, and the answer to your question is that at this point, in reading is when I learned about the Witch Purge of 1878. So several years after the Long Walk, the Diné were allowed to return home. It is said that several tribespeople turned into shapeshifters to escape the terrible conditions. After finally returning home, conditions improved, but the Skinwalkers, who were partially blamed for the bad conditions in the first place, were still among them. Mm -hmm. Soon after, people were pointing fingers and accusing people... Uh, of being skinwalkers and then a collection of which artifacts were found wrapped in a copy of the treaty of 1868 which started the long walk 
and soon after a purge happened where about 40 suspected skinwalkers were killed. All right. So I guess it's not a position of power then. Uh, yes. <laughs> at least not now. True. Not yeah, in the at modern least, time. At least post long walk. It's not. It was not great to be thought of as a skinwalker. That makes sense. I mean, you are like, it makes sense in, in just in the fact that a skinwalker based on even the original descriptions is an insanely powerful individual. Yeah. Um, so from the perspective of a non super powered individual, it does make sense to just murk them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like I, I don't, I don't know if I completely blame them. Although at the same time, like, because if you believe well, something, I don't blame uh, you. But at the same time, it is still killing people. It's, yeah. So I've got a very split opinion where it's like, no, it's totally fine. Like, t- no, blame them. Like, it's, they just straight murked people. Um, yeah. And it's... the same thing is how we think now about um, the the Salem trials. But at the same time, the Salem trials were another, um, you know, religion went, these people are witches. We must kill them. So it's yeah. it's one. You, you, I can see both sides. Is I guess what I'm trying to say is I can see going. We'll give them some lenience because of these conditions and these beliefs. And I can see the other side where it's, yeah, but they murked a dude. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. and it's hard. It's hard, man. Even by the standards of, uh, by the standards of um, the Salem witch trials, forty people's a lot of people. Oh yeah, no purge. Like, the word purge is not used indiscreetly. It is. No. Uh, <laughs> it's definitely it a purge. Yeah. Oh yeah. man, hopefully no one was wearing uh, any of those like animal masks like in the in the purge movies. That'd be crazy. <sighs> That's such well, a. I mean, they, oh, that might have been a thing. Actually, it might have been a thing if we're talking traditional skinwalker. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean. If I'm a guy who's being accused of a skinwalker, I'm going to distance myself as much as possible from traditional skinwalker. Yeah. Like, I'm going to go out of my way not to look like a skinwalker. Oh, yeah. If uh, anything, I might I might buy one of those, like, practical joke pairs of glasses with, like, the fake mustache. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> the really, like, thick-rimmed glasses and just sit there uh-huh. like, I, I don't know. I mean, it works for Clark Kent. Yeah. So... Worst you know. disguise ever. Literally just glasses. Yeah. But you see, here's the thing. Clark Kent has to wear glasses. Look at all the stuff that Superman does without glasses. How could those be the same person? Even That's though their true. build is identical. Fun fact, Superman originally could not fly. But then he later was given the ability to fly because it was silly that like he would have to like take a cab to like get well, somewhere <laughs> so another part of that was because yeah. it was so expensive to animate him jumping oh really yeah yeah they they took away the they changed it like that's why his original like you know able to leap tall buildings in a single bound yeah like you know how that's part of his whole thing uh-huh they took that away because they were like wait if we want to animate this into cartoons in the future, oh, or yeah. we want to have this as a TV show, it's cheaper to do fly than animate. I it's can so see, animate the jumping to... motion. I exactly. can see that. Yeah, exactly. That's V A V E. Yeah. So. Yep. One story talks about a man who, while home alone on his ranch, heard laughing coming from his sheep pen. That's what? just sheep. That's just they're going ha 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 ha. It's just they're just telling sheep puns. What he saw when he arrived was that all the sheep were huddled in the far corner of the pen. And opposite them was a solitary ram standing on two legs and laughing at the sheep. It turned and looked at the man with human eyes, then casually walked off on all fours. Oh, that's just Carl. That's just Carl. Carl, every, every, every every single sheep herd has a Carl. Yeah, I'd prefer I mean, Carl over a real ram. Their eyes, the sideways rectangle eyes, that's crazy. Well, Carl has vertical rectangle eyes. It's kind of weird. 
oh, it's pretty weird. Yeah, I mean, he's he's kind of channeling a reptile a little bit. Yeah. But uh, he's essential. He keeps he keeps predators away from the flock. Mm-hmm. I mean, once a Carl dies, you're screwed. <laughs> Listen. Carl's a jerk to the animals he's protecting, though. <laughs> oh, he is. He is. But he instills fear in them. Yeah. In a way that a sheepdog could never instill fear. <laughs> That's true. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. listen. Mm-hmm. Just next time you're at next time you're at a uh, farm, yeah. keep an eye out. You'll see the Carl. Oh, you'll see the Carl. You'll see the Carl. Well, you might not see the Carl because the Carl sneaks up on you. Yeah, <laughs> he's a rare he's a rare sight. Okay, uh-huh. and they kind of have this weird hive mind thing going on. We are Carl. That's what yeah. Carl says all the time. Yeah, don't don't let there be too many Carls in one place because then they start to like come together and you start to get a super Carl and uh, eventually thing. eventually they get a New Jersey accent and mm-hmm. uh like. Food starts to animate around them. It's really uh-huh. weird. It's very weird. It's very weird. Another story claims that a rancher noticed his cattle being killed. From a distance, he saw a large coyote or a wild dog. He later sees it and this time shoots at it at point blank range. But the bullets have no effect. The creature oh, high event- field horror. Oh, high end field horror. Fancy meeting you here. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. All right, well, mm-hmm. that's interesting. Mm-hmm. The creature runs off. He attempts to track it, but the footprints eventually just fade away. Hmm. Mm-hmm. That's that's weird. Yeah. I mean, even if it was a skinwalker, they still wouldn't just fade away. Yeah, they turn to, like, dude feet. Imagine yeah. seeing that. Imagine, oh, you know what? Skinwalkers in Patreon right now, Animorphs. Furry. That's furry related right there. The, are the animorphs? For, I don't think the animorphs are furry related. I would let's, love to let's see be an real. animorph where like Danny DeVito turns into a chinchilla or something weird like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a chinchilla. That, it's a reverse animorph, like the new new episodes of the X Files. It's really a chinchilla that turns into Danny DeVito. I was I was googling furry skinwalkers. Oh man, smear those results on me. Um, let's see. There's a fur affinity post about skinwalkers. What's uh, that? Is that like a Wikipedia thing? Like a like a furry wiki? Oh no, it's not a furry wiki at all. I I would recommend not going to furry fur affinity. Uh, there's a book <laughs> about skinwalker. Okay. Someone's claiming that skinwalkers are the first furry. Um, uh huh. A lot of it's getting caught by oh. Q furry porn best post community profiles are furry porn 380 funny. I would okay. click on that one. It's me- dot com. Don't 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 plug these websites. <laughs> oh, there's a uh, there's a, a PowerPoint presentation. Oh, I love a good PowerPoint. Um, Toby McGuire was the best Peter Parker. You can't disagree with that. I disagree wholeheartedly with that. Who is the best Peter Parker then? Everyone except him. No, don't. Okay, Tobey Maguire was a great Peter Parker. I okay, legitimately, not a great Spider Man. Great Peter Parker. I did not like the, those Spider Man movies because I didn't like Sacrilege. the casting in them. Sacrilege! I know Spider Man Two is one of the greatest superhero movies of all time. The uh, I like the new one with the kid. I forget Tom his name. Holland. Yes. Yeah, that one's good. Yeah. Uh, Homecoming's very good. The uh, I just couldn't. It was it's just very hard, and that's that's our, like across the board the casting in those movies. Like I I like I couldn't get into any of the characters across the board. Tom Holland was a not Tom Holland. Um, is it Andrew Garfield? Andrew Garfield was a great Spider Man, but he was a terrible Peter Parker. He was way too confident. And I say that because at my core level in high school, I was a Peter Parker. There's, I think they need a Spider-Man who just ha- like has a bunch of porn and weird stuff hidden under his bed. But that's not Peter Parker. I that's don't know. That's Peter Parker. That's Peter Porker. 
<laughs> that is actually canon, by the way. Peter Porker? Peter Porker at Spider-Ham. That's spi- oh, that's the Simpsons. No. No? No. Spider-Ham. Okay. So, we're, we're getting really far off track of Skinwalkers here. The Simpsons here. movie had... They had the pig hold. They're holding it on the ceiling, and they're like spider pig, spider pig. Yeah, like that was a whole thing. Pig. Yeah, spider pig. But yeah, before spider pig was spider there was ham. Peter, there was Peter, uh, Peter, Peter Porker, Porker and uh-huh. he was uh, a. So here's what happened. With Is Peter this Porker. like dog pool? Mm, kind of. So Peter Porker, yeah, was a uh, spider that was bitten by a radioactive. Pig. And he turned into a pig. And he had the proportionate strength of a spider and all the abilities of a spider while this being is a canon. pig. This is this canon? Is, this is canon because he has made an appearance. He made an appearance in uh, the Edge of Spider-Verse movie or whatever. Into the we Spider-verse. need to go burn down the Marvel headquarters. People love Peter Porker. Peter Porker is an abomination. Yeah, I'm not going to disagree with you, but Peter Porker is a thing. And he's canon. <sighs> so, I guess you just had to deal with that fact. I how are you, how are you going to finish this episode now? Huh? Huh? I feel dirty. I think we should just end it right now. All right. Well, for podcast's good. over. Forever. Yeah. Yet oh. another story. <laughs> <laughs> I, found, I found one last thing. Oh, no. Um, what is it? My name is Miles Morhamis. I'm the ultimate spider ham, and I'm here to save the universe. And it's a hyper realistic big head on Miles Morales' body. <sighs> <laughs> Why, Marvel? What have you done to betray me? And yet another story, this one from a Texas man who I would describe as being bad at staying on topic. Like us. Like us. <laughs> so he's our he's our kin. He's our spirit animal. Okay, cool. In the summer of 1995, he was hanging around with some friends. Things happened involving fishing, armadillos, using pantyhose as a fan belt, and a barbecue. Hmm. Uh, okay, that sounds like a pretty uh, that sounds like a pretty standard Texas day. He had paragraphs on all of that. I saved everyone the trouble and just cut it all out. I just wanted hmm. to let you know those stories are extant and in the sources. Good. V- very eventually, on a dark human <laughs> night, while listening to, and this is his quote, either Tupac or Bob Seger. Can you get any more different? Like, <laughs> like I don't think I could pick two <laughs> musical artists more different than Tupac or Bob Seger. They're the two most disparate... Like, you couldn't... I don't know how you get that mixed up! Uh, I don't know... Wait, what is what is Bob Seger's song? Yeah, no. There's there's literally, literally no way you can mix those two up. At all. Right? So, Bob... Everyone knows Tupac. Bob Seger's yeah. like a folk guy. He, he He's a sing... Like, he's one of those people that is a singer-songwriter... So he's, yeah. he writes that kind of music. He's basically a bard. Jeez. So so while listening to either Tupac or Bob Seger and driving his truck, he saw something out the corner of his eye. In his periphery, um, something was running alongside his truck. Now, at this point, I want to say, I know I... we just had a tangent. This will be a short tangent. When you were a kid... And you're, and you're riding yes. someone else's car. Did you ever picture, like, yes. something running alongside the car? Okay, ditto, me too. Yes. That's I still dope. do that today, so, you know, it's, it's yeah. normal. Yeah. While but... I'm driving, which is usually not a good idea. <laughs> that explains a lot. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, it does. Yeah. Oh, it was just at the edge of the door behind the window. According to the speedometer, he was going 40 miles an hour. He describes it as having a huge arm being matted with reddish brown hair and looking primal. Are we sure that it's not a Bigfoot? It, at this point, it could be a, a Bigfoot. It still could be a Bigfoot. This matches yeah. some of the stories I've heard about Bigfoot. Yeah, yeah. He looked over at his friend, and he was looking straight forward with his jaw clenched shut. 
I imagine his friend looking uh, the way people look when it wasn't just a fart. <laughs> <laughs> That just reminded me of a so one another really quick tangent one time yeah. i was driving in i want to say connecticut are you talking about the fart i'm talking about the fart okay so i'm driving with a friend we're uh-huh. the only two people in the car and we're driving through like hartford connecticut or something like uh uh-huh. we were going to a show and we're next to the whatever the equivalent to Kennedy Fried Chicken they've got out there is. It's like yeah. Royal Chicken or something like that. We're driving past that, and I only remember that because that that's how I remember the intersection. <laughs> he let one loose that was so bad, I nearly ran a red light <laughs> because it distracted me so much. I probably made whatever this man's face was in that moment. Oh because yeah, because I'm more scared of that fart to this day the after fart... like six years like, than a Wendigo or a Skinwalker. I can confirm that this fart never left the car. Mm-mm. You have a different car now, but till the day that you crashed it, the uh, that car always smelled like farts. Yes, but that's also because I fart in the car a lot too. That's true. I am made of farts. So. You you have a very talkative anus. That's an understatement. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a nightmare. Yep. He then speeds up. At 50 miles an hour, the creature loses pace, and they outrun it. After driving in silence, he started to ask his friend if he had seen it, but before the words were out of his mouth, his friend interjected. I see it. I've been seeing it. I can't even... <laughs> I can't even see you, but I can see whatever the hell that shit is. What? The story ends up with them speeding up to 55 miles an hour and finally losing the creature once and for all. He says there are only two regrets in his life. The first is smoking his first cigarette, and the second is him looking slightly to the right that night. Hmm. I mean, hmm. Hmm. I, I get the first one. That uh-huh. one makes sense to me. He's fine. Yeah. Right? Like, he's fine. He didn't get hurt. He's fine, but based off reading his article, he's not fine. He's literally probably the worst person to sit next to in a bar. Oh, is he one of those types that, you know, starts telling you his life story as soon as you sit next to him and... It's like, I don't really care. Like, I, I'm i pretty sure that I linked the source from this unedited in the sor- in the sources. The whole thing reads like a guy in a bar. Like, he tells you about the Armadillo story, and he's like, well, I listened to Tupac or Bob Seger. It, like, it's... Uh, it's something. I'm just kind of flabbergasted by it. Yeah, no, it, it's a banana story. And oh, is this is this true horror stories of Texas? Yeah, that's the true horror stories of Texas link. Okay, okay, yep. Um, oh my god, this is such a long article. Yeah, right. More than <laughs> for like, like literally a couple three paragraphs. seconds. Yeah, it, it's like a <laughs> sentence. You could have finished that story in a sentence. I was driving one night. Something was running next to me at 40 miles an hour. I sped up to 55, and then I didn't see it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That's, like, so... (laughs) I just... (laughs) Do you see what I go through for the listeners every week? I read that whole thing. Yeah, well... And then just summarized it. I got a fun one next week that's got me all hyped up. That's good. It's okay. I get it. I so understand. that that really sums up what the modern idea of skinwalkers are in movies and in fiction and video games and the such. Today's episode is brought to you by Dirty Urns Waste Management. 
Dirty Urn specializes in the discreet pickup and disposal of all residential waste. Never worry about your neighbors waking up to an unexpected pickup again. Our private and discreet service will accept any refuse, no questions asked. Earn and his tight-lipped employees will provide a disposal bin smaller than an average sedan. It is bear-proof, which means it is lockable and will not allow any unwanted stench to escape. Provide a pickup location on the purchase order and they will get your waste from any location, whether it be behind the house as not to annoy the neighbors, or any other discreet location and haul it away like it never happened. Now back to the show. Here's where I would like to start talking about Skinwalker Ranch. It would be a sin at this point to not bring it up. This is... Okay. I remember little bits and pieces about Skinwalker Ranch. Yeah, yeah. And of all the places in the world that I believe in less, I don't know how many places are above Skinwalker Ranch. It's... Just... We will see. Okay. We will okay. keep an open mind. Yeah, I'll try to keep an open mind, but I'm going to be making fun of it. In Utah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there exists an over 400-acre ranch dubbed Skinwalker Ranch. Mm-hmm. First appearing in a 1996 article in the Utah Desert News by Zach Van Eyck, a few lines from this first article read as, There are more stars in the sky then there are grains of sand on the planet Earth. The notion that Doubt. any... Wait, what did you say? Doubt. 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 I sincerely doubt that there are more stars in the sky than grains of sand on the planet Earth. I just don't know what the answer is, so... <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that there's more <laughs> sand on Earth than in the sky, but I, I had to look that up. I would believe an argument for either. I just don't... I, th- this is one thing where I'm just like... There's a bunch of each, and I don't know what the answer is. I just know there's a bunch of each. Okay. So that continues. The notion that anybody would say that out of this incredible number of stars, there's only one planet that has life on it is ludicrous. That's egocentric to the max. Uh, I looked it up. There are more stars than grains of sand. Okay. I'll write on real-time fact-checking. Yeah, I, I want to, ch- to fact-check myself, but yeah, there's about mm-hmm. ten times more. Yep. Sherman's 480-acre ranch just north of Fort Duchesne in uh, Unitah. I don't know how to say that. And listen, I've read so much crazy freaking names. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to get that one right. No, I was it's, just going to say that it was, it, it, was, it was south of that fort. Oh, just... Yeah, I just wanted to catch your... I wanted to, to fact check you now. Fine. Just south of Fort... Let's try this one again. Duchens. Duchens. Do you can see? Do you can You can see? I think I it's Duchens. I mean, mm-hmm. so Utah is mostly uh, Spanish settlers, right? Like initially. Sure. So, but then again, there's a lot of Mormons. I didn't pay attention in history class. I don't know. I don't. All I know I don't, is the Mormon thing. I, I. It doesn't matter to me. Okay. I'm not so even going to say. Of Fort Duchens in Unitaw County has been dubbed a hot, or sorry, has been a hotbed of UFOs and bizarre paranormal activity. The Shermans, their teenage son and ten-year-old daughter, have seen three specific types of UFOs repeatedly during the past fifteen months: a small box-like craft and a white light, a forty-foot-long object, and a huge ship the size of several football fields. They've seen one craft emit a wavy red, red, <laughs> a wavy red ray of light or beam as it flies along. That's a tongue twister. Is it? Wavy red ray. Say it. Wavy red ray. All right, fine. <laughs> I see wavy how it red is. ray. Wavy red ray. Uh huh. Okay. Wavy red ray. Fine. You know what? Fine. Yeah, I'll fine. get you. I'll get you. Okay. Also, um, I want to stop for a second and point out that if there was a ship the size of several football fields, uh huh, you wouldn't just see it from Skinwalker Ranch. Oh no, you would think that more than just these these uh, family at one point would have seen it. Well, it says specifically their teenage son and ten year old daughter. Yeah. 
I remember being a teenager and 10 years old and, a lot, and making things up. Yeah. So, okay. Mm-hmm. There's I have other theories that I'll get into later. I would like to point out that we're on page 414. Jesus. So I'm just I'm just giving you I'm giving you the overview before we do the deep dive. I'm I'm flabbergasted that we're this only this far into this. Yeah. Okay, I'll 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 stop with the the riffing for a little bit so you can move <laughs> on. Uh, we can do a three-parter. I'm fine with that. Good lord. <laughs> Let's they continue. once discovered three circles of flattened grass, each about eight feet across in a triangular pattern, about 30 feet from each other. A quick comment on Zach's comments on UFOs. Uh, something people like to point to a lot um, is something called the Drake Equation. <clears throat> in short, it's an equation developed in 1961 that uses variables to calculate the probability of other life forms developing communication in our cosmos. It is used frequently to argue for the existence of aliens. This is because when Frank Drake first developed it, more as a way to start a dialogue than anything else, it seemed more probable than not that we were not alone. Unfortunately, what most people forget is that as we grow and develop better technology and science, the values of those variables contained within the equation are updated with more accurate figures based on our growing understanding of the universe. In fact, the most recent update to the Drake equation was made by Oxford University in 2017, and without going into a lot of detail into how it was changed, what I am trying to say is that the Drake equation currently suggests that humans are more likely to be the only in the universe. We're alone. Okay. That- so that's that's definitely your pterosaurs, then. Yeah, yeah, no, that's my pterosaurs. I'm, I'm almost guaranteeing you that the Drake equation will come up more often than not. And if anyone's going to bring it up, it's going to be you. Yeah. I would be surprised if I said it on a past episode and I know I've mentioned it to you, like just <laughs> in have, conversation before. You have mentioned it on at least two episodes in the past. Oh yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, the article was quickly picked up by and expanded upon by George Knapp of coast to coast fame. Was George Knapp the one who had the, uh, uh, was he the one who had the Area 51 call? Yes. Yeah, he's yep. uh, a bit credulous. Uh, yeah, no, that that's an understatement. But uh, he published his articles in the Las Vegas Mercury soon after, titled Path of the Skinwalker. The first one reads a lot like a slash fiction. Um, an excerpt reads as follows. See, I knew it. Furry community. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Uh-huh. On this night, I am the bait. Bait for what, I wonder? The unspoken hope is that my own inherent weirdness quotient might f- give me some sort of connection to the undeniably odd energy or entity that seems to have concentrated itself upon this remote rural community, and in particular on this small ranch where I now sit. Waiting for something to announce its presence. I'm waiting for Lincoln Park to start playing. Yeah, like it's <laughs> like, like, or maybe maybe some My Chemical Romance or uh, Panic oh, at the Disco. MCR. Let's get some Fallout Boy cranking, man. Yeah, I mean, hey, listen, I'm joking about this. I listen to all of these things, and I still listen to a little bit of Fallout Boy because their most recent album was not that bad. Oh, right on. And they did their, uh, the album, the, the songs that they released for Big Hero 6 uh-huh. were pretty were, were pretty good. Oh, sweet. I actually liked Immortals quite a bit. Uh-huh. Damn. All right. But, the second, know. yeah, the second article is a little more straightforward. This is the second of two reports about the persistent stories of anonymous phenomena in the section of northeastern Utah. The activity, as reported by hundreds of witnesses over several decades, includes UFOs, unusual balls of light, animal mutilations, disappearances, poltergeist events, sightings of Bigfoot-like creatures, and other unidentified animals, physical effects on plants, soil, animals, and humans, and a vast array of unexplained incidents. Right? So, very differently written. Both include reports of dark or human-like figures appearing and disappearing into the night, uh, as well as unseen animal yells. 
Hmm. I, mm. uh, uh, animal yells are one of those weird things because, like, people always say, "Oh, I I recognize so and so. I know all the animals in this area." Do you? Do you? Do you? Like, well, I mean, it's pretty easy to identify. Like, for example, in the woods at my parents' house, and uh, you can hear, "Hey, I am a wolf." That's true. They do announce their name <laughs> yeah. and their species and their, their taxonomy. I mean, I'm waiting to hear, hey, Bigfoot here. Yeah. I'm one oh. of them chupa, chupa thingies. Yeah. <laughs> it's a me, a Martha man. Oh. Hey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So that's something I wasn't expecting. Yeah. Listen, I'm not the king of accents. Ah, oh, jeez. I'm not the king of accents either. <laughs> so I don't do them. Oh. Uh, this and several other articles sparked huge public interest. In particular, it sparks the interest of one Robert Bigelow. Oh, God, I forgot about this. Yeah. Oh, he's the guy who, who has budget tweets and all that stuff. Uh-huh. Bigelow oh. is a wealthy businessman and hotel entrepreneur who owns the Budget Suites of America hotel chain. He, he also pur- uh, he also yeah. uh, ran a gigolo business in his youth uh-huh. um, and turned into a carrot temporarily. Yeah, Bigelow's Gigolos. That's what's mm-hmm. up. Yeah, yeah. He purchased then Sherman Ranch and nicknamed it UFO Ranch. Well, hmm. Okay. Seems like you're uh, contaminating the the eff- efforts of science a little bit by, uh, you know, calling something something like that. You're inherently biasing your researchers, I feel like. Shortly after, he hired a number of ufologists. And there it is. And 13 PhDs, led by molecular biologist Colm Keller, to form the National Institute for Science Discovery, or NIDS for short. The team began calling UFO Ranch Skinwalker Ranch. So are they real PhDs, or are they PhDs in the way that one of our teachers in school was a PhD? They're real FUDs. Okay. Yeah, just, I've, just, I've linked stuff down, down below okay. to, to, to okay. like the internet archive of the original website that breaks out there. Like, they, they, they've got creds. Okay, um, good. NIDS documented a vast number of creatures and strange phenomena, and... Bigelow published 22 books on the ranch. That seems like a lot. Yeah, yeah, and many television series and several movies have been shot on or about the ranch. I've included a link to the archived NIDS website and the skinwalkerranch.org site in the show notes. Outside of NIDS, many paranormal and cryptozoological interested people claim to have experienced many things. Um, It is open. <clears throat> Sorry, it is openly considered one of the most preternatural places in the world. Some think that it contains uh, a portal of sorts, and others think it sits in the middle of a strange Bermuda-type triangle. Hmm, okay, so neither of those things are provable, but go Listen, for it. I'm banking everything for my exposition at the end, where I like to set things a little bit straight. Okay, okay. <laughs> Ooh, ooh, I like some of these things that I'm seeing. Yeah, yeah. So the NIDS website lists many strange aerial phenomena, and SkinwalkerRanch.org lists some entities that they have documented. Among those listed are the spotlight, a light in the sky that travels around 40 miles an hour with a headlight and a taillight, flash drones, balls of pulsating light that appear in the sky, the, quote, invisible chopper, The sound of an incredibly (laughs) low-flying helicopter may be heard, but there's apparently nothing to see or to smell. The chopper, they say, has no smell. Wait, what? That's like... mm, uh, That's something you never see. When I describe an aircraft, I rarely describe the smell. I mean, you can always, like, if you're near an aircraft, it will definitely smell like kerosene a little bit, but that's a different Well, yeah, but if they're in flight, you're not going to be like... Oh, it's a B-22. I, I, yeah, I mean, if you smell a B-22, you're a little bit, you're, you're a little bit in danger of dying. <laughs> oh, that's some sweet F-16. Oh. oh, uh. They don't make those anymore. F-16s? No. 
No, I know that. I mean, okay. Well, once, once. I mean, what are they working on currently? The JSAF, I think. The oh, sixteen. They? they they basically the government. Brandon here. I'm not sure how much of this is actually public knowledge. It was more uh, conversation, shall we say, between me and some engineers. And uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and pick up the episode at the end of this little stint. So You know who does cool shit? Hmm? The Russians. The Russians have cool shit. Oh, the MiGs? I forget the name of the one that was just at one of the more recent air shows. But, like, imagine, if you will, right? Because it's basically speed um communications and uh agility are the three things that you look at in aircraft Mm -hmm. um communications is the really big thing right now but the russians have some that at an air show i saw they had one sit like vertical above the ground but like imagine just like seeing a jet standing perfectly still like 30 feet above the ground really nose towards the sky that's pretty amazing i'm looking at a uh i'm looking at the mig 41 right now are you i don't think i think it's i think it's not the mig 41 it might be the c-35 there. there's i should be good at remembering this shit but i'm, I'm not because i just don't i i commit so much memory to other shit that i'm just like ah planes whatever uh i think it might be the su <laughs> 35 i'm looking Maybe. at it right now okay it's a pretty gorgeous looking plane, I will say that much. Oh yeah. yeah as yeah. as somebody who at one point wanted to be an aerospace engineer and has an affinity for planes, mm-hmm. uh it's a gorgeous it's a gorgeous bird. Yeah. No, there uh there's some pretty dope shit out there. The uh list continued, I'll say. Jeez. Um, the mini stealth, a very small version of a stealth jet. The quote bulletproof wolf. It's a bulletproof wolf. I feel like most wolves are bulletproof um, are not bulletproof so that's mm-hmm. that is weird yeah the controllers the sound of adult male voices over walkie talkie uh sometimes accompany the invisible choppers the quote dark one a native american who guards the portal a quote little girl the disembodied voice of a little girl may be heard on occasion firefly sprites balls of blue light that travel straight upward from the ground mm-hmm. quote water babies that's fun the sound of if <coughs> sorry, oh that was weird. The sound of infants may be heard near water. If one approaches, they are pulled under and drowned. The Cthulhu slug, That's a large so dumb, the large slimy black slug that kills swimmers. Glow birds, so there are red glowing birds, uh, that that fly at treetop level. Oh, is it what, the ropin? Uh, maybe. And the orange football, a fifteen foot by ten foot object that flies about. That's not a, a football. Uh huh. That's way too big to be a football. It's a big old football. Like, way too big. Uh-huh. They also listed sentient mist. Mm-hmm. Described by Bigelow's researchers as a neurological electricity, this unique entity is completely black in color, takes an intangible form of thick smoke, and the smoke is described as um, a disembodied skin of black electrified energy that possesses an intellect. I want to... Whole- I yeah. want to stop for a second. Yeah. Um, what is a neurological electricity? Why I don't are they? Know. Why are they just throwing that word out there like it makes any sense at all? They're just throwing together a mishmash. And I would like to point out that um, it's kind of why jargon exists. Is you can just bullshit throw together a bunch of stuff, unless you're like, so, like this is a little bit more obvious. But when you're talking to people and they just start saying jargon, you know the bullshit train's about to enter the station because... I mean, at the end of the day, uh, all electricity is the same. It's just an electron cascade. Yeah, it's all just dancing pixies. Like, that's literally what... When you say static electricity, you're not literally making a different kind of electricity than what's in your wire. It's just a categorization of the electricity based on the thing that created it right mm-hmm. like i'm not going crazy am i yeah the i also electric- don't like the word static electricity because when i typically say static that means something is not in motion that's fair yeah. and static electricity actually requires motion to be generated so mm-hmm. as most electricity does now that i think about it yeah isn't static electricity technically <laughs> an oxymoron uh, uh it's possible because electricity is in itself not not like a literal 
oxymoron because of meaning. But a, them electrons like moving. That's yeah, their whole deal. That's their thing. They just like to move. Mm-hmm. They like to move from places from high to low. That's what that's what voltage is. Yeah, man. Ah. Uh. Theorists hold that this is a pre-transitional embodiment of a not yet formed entity as it emerges from a portal or flash drone. What's a the flash sh- drone? What? What? I don't know, John. Why? What? I but. This shapeless, malleable mist will eventually... It's intangible, yet malleable. Go figure that the fuck out. That... Will eventually mold itself into a local animal or humanoid. What? But... Update. I, I... This form has been known to take humanoid shape with tentacle-like appendages. Uh, is this... It's a slender man. Why? No, but that's not... Uh, when did that... It's a slender man. When did they add that to their whole thing? Did they add it after They didn't fact, add a date to the update. They but, should uh, have added a date to the update. That's important because that gives <clears throat> cultural context. Uh-huh. And that, mm, what is a flash drone? I don't know. They also s- describe the portal. Okay. Saying that, quote, I've never seen this firsthand, but I have possibly seen radiation from it. Made mm, the entire what? night scenery. They've never seen it, but they've maybe seen radiation. But, uh, okay, I'm kind of hurting a little bit. It made the entire night scenery appear like daytime for ten seconds. A mm. very bright flash of light which illuminated both the sky and the ground before going into the timeline of... Oh, sorry, I forgot to put a space here. Boop! Before going into the timeline of Skinwalker Ranch, this is Brandon talking now, um, I would like to point out something. Nids never found anything outside of anecdotal evidence. The physical evidence they found uh, is described by paranormal experts as cattle mutilation and by normal experts as typical signs of animal predation and natural decomposition. I would also like to say that they never said they found a skinwalker. Yeah, I'm a little... (laughs) So... Here's the thing that's got me the most confused. Uh huh. Why did Skinwalker Ranch get called Skinwalker Ranch? I don't know. <laughs> there literally aren't those. Like, uh huh. Right? Yeah. I think they just thought it sounded cool that then, like, cooler than UFO Ranch. What? What are you? What? What? What's the? What are you reacting to? I went on, I, I so I was Googling why Skinwalker Ranch is called Skinwalker Ranch. Uh, oh, I found, uh, did you just find a nudist place? I No. Okay. I would be probably better. They trademarked the name Skinwalker Ranch. Yeah, because there's movies and books. But I can I can't tell you why they named it. I can tell you why they trademarked it. And I also have a timeline coming up where I... What? I, uh, uh, I'm going to blow the doors wide open on this thing, man. But, okay, I literally can't find any entries about Skinwalkers relating to Skinwalker Ranch. Because there aren't any on both SkinwalkerRanch.org and the NIDS website. They don't find Skinwalkers on Skinwalker Ranch. What? That's such on a... On the website's... Owned by the guy who owns Skinwalker Ranch. They never found him. But. <laughs> I'm. What? Uh-huh. My non-expert opinion on how decomposition can be mistaken for supernatural is as follows. An animal dies, scavengers show up, and eat the soft portions of the body, i.e. eyes, anus, and genitals. There will be no blood. And this is because when the heart stops, blood pools and settles to the ground. Then flies and other insects become consume or begin consuming the dead flesh. The easiest target would be the soft edges of the wounds left around the eyes, mouth, anus, and genitals that were already damaged by scavengers. The result is a relatively clean looking edge to a wound with no blood. Sick animals often wander out on their own to die, so it is no wonder why people could see a lone cow away from the others, dead, no blood, and clean wounds, and think that it was something supernatural. You gotta watch out for them, uh, them anus vampires. Uh Uh-huh. Them anus vampires. Yeah, you gotta watch out for Uh them. They, 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 they're not allowed in your house, but they will live in your toilet. They will live in your toilet. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Jones. That's a that's a fact. It's a fact, man. That's a fact. Because it, it it's more factual than anything I've heard so far. <laughs> there literally are no facts. But I, so I, I kitty just, cat, kitty no. There's I, a kitty cat chewing on XLR cables. Kitty cat, no, Molnar. This is this is the perils of She's been very chewy. With cats. Hang on, let me get the lightsaber real quick. Kitty cat. Brandon is currently grabbing a Kylo Ren lightsaber to bap his cat. Shoo! Um, Shoo. It looks Fear like it. it's effective. Nope, nope, not effective yet. Fear it! Uh, the, the cat has fear no it. fear. The cat has lost all fear. What is happening? There we go. <coughs> Woo. Brandon has returned. Cat fr- all right, cat and we are away. back. I was giving color commentary to your encounter with a cat. Oh, were you? Yes. Um, I believe your cat might be a skinwalker. My based. cat, I think, has pika. She likes chewing a lot on a lot of non-food items, but is also terrified of toy lightsabers. So all I did was grab my toy lightsaber and uh, show it to her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know what my cat's terrified of? What? Leaf blowers. Oh, I believe it. It's good. Yeah. In 1996, Robert Bigelow was awarded the Pegasus Award. The Pegasus Award is a tongue and cheek reward given out by a le- living legend, James Randi. For those of you who do not know, James Randi is a skeptic and a magician who puts what Houdini did to psychics to shame. Uh, it is given out each April 1st to expose frauds and to those who dedicate reckless resources to uh, Flim Flam. Flim Flam. Flim Flam. He also heads the James Randi Educational Foundation, which will reward anyone $1 million um, who can demonstrate any supernatural abilities in a controlled environment. Many have tried, but it turns out that their abilities are interrupted in a controlled setting. Well, skeptics disable my psychic powers, obviously. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, obviously. I. If there's non-believers, they interfere with the psychic energies and they interfere with the ley lines and all that stuff. Yeah. And suddenly, I I just can't. Yeah, it it's, it happens. Um, on national television, uh, a psychic claimed he could move physical objects. James Randi sprinkled light plastic particles on the phone book uh, that the psychic had previously been able to turn the pages of. Randi claimed that he was blowing on the pages, um, and that if he was not the pages should still turn without the plastic being disturbed. But as it turns out, the plastic interrupted his psychic abilities. I mean, plastic interrupts my psychic abilities. So. Oh, yeah. But you see, I have to I have to surround myself with plastic because if I don't, I become way too powerful and I can't be contained. Too by powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's kind of, it's, it's weird looking. Yeah. It's, it's strange. Yeah. Let's just say... There's a reason why I have so many transformers, and it's not because I I have a slight uh, bit of hoarding in my personality and uh-huh. an addictive personality. No, I'm doing it to contain my psychic powers <laughs> for the the good of the world. Yeah, yeah. He also exposed world famous Yuri Geller on TV. Uri said that uh, Randy just did magic tricks, and what he did was with real supernatural powers. Or, when Uri didn't know uh, it was Randy controlling the settings, he just wasn't feeling strong. He later sued Randy for libel. Yeah, um, <laughs> Yuri Geller is kind of a jerk. Oh, he yeah. Sued, he sued uh, Nintendo or Game Freak over uh, Abracadabra and Alakazam because they have Oh, spoons. because of the spoon bending? Yeah, like... Yeah. And for a while, Abra, Kadabra, and Alkazam didn't appear in the Pokemon trading card game as a result of it. Oh, really? Yeah, because they just didn't feel like dealing with his nonsense. Yeah. And he also exposed uh, one uh, of the nearly all truly evil televangelists, Peter Popov, worth I nearly hate that guy. a quarter billion dollars in 2005. Popoff claims to heal people with cancer and other terminal conditions or potentially lethal conditions with the power of God's voice. Randy, however, found that this uncanny knowledge of people and their conditions did come from God and that God's voice sends an awful lot 
like Peter Popoff's wife, on the radio frequency of 39.17 megahertz, uh, reading prayer cards that were previously filled out by the audience members. Uh, I, also, I, uh, that Ed Guy and Peter Popoff and Sylvia Brown and all of them have switched to Facebook. Uh, they still do prayer cards, but also use Facebook. Didn't um, Sylvia Ross Brown... Ross and Carrie also did some. Yeah. Didn't Sylvia Brown die? Uh, hopefully. Well, I, I don't like wishing death on people as a uh, rule. Yeah, she I died in... 2013 very strong negative opinion of uh psychics <laughs> yeah I, it's that's always one of those hard things where it's like i just don't think I, it should be legal i i don't think so i i think i think you should not be able to charge money for surfaces that are not rendered no and like the fact of the matter is it, it's 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 just gross and it's yeah. it's it's so manipulative of people and just i don't know it's so it's such the antithesis of the way I like to live my life that uh-huh. I legitimately can't wrap my head around lying to someone or manipulating someone. And well, it's like, beyond lying. It's 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 telling people like you don't need medicine, you yeah. need this. <laughs> like, well, I mean that's that's basically what killed what's his name yeah. uh, or the Steve emotional Jobs. harm. Yeah. Oh it yeah. Literally, it literally killed Steve Jobs because it literally he had... kills a bunch of people yeah. all over. That and also the emotional harm of allowing people to think that you can actually communicate with their dead relatives or give supernatural advice to them. Like it's it's really bad stuff. The um there was one case in which someone was uh actually still alive and uh, I'm remembering this off the top of my head, so I don't know if this is exactly correct. So yeah. uh caveat and tour. Um mm-hmm. do some research. I'll maybe if I find it I'll post a link in the show notes. There was a case in which Sylvia Brown um said oh, to someone was, who wasn't dead yeah <laughs> uh it was like a missing person's case uh-huh and the person was not dead and she was like they're dead <laughs> and they stopped looking for them. oh i'm so happy that my taxes go to the police working with these individuals yeah it was in 2004 um there was an abduction case in which she claimed the person was dead but they actually found them later yeah (laughs) um and it actually it it had a negative impact because the person was abducted and there's only you only have a limited amount of time in the case of human trafficking to save someone oh it's a fact yeah you know it's like don't screw around with people yeah sorry that's this is nothing to do with skinwalker ranch I just really don't like Sylvia. Brown. That's fine. Literally, the first half of the first page was Skinwalkers, and the rest is tangents. <laughs> there is. I'm just flabbergasted by the fact that there is literally we had maybe a page about Skinwalkers. Yeah. Well, there's really modern the modern version of Skinwalkers. There's that not a whole lot, at least that I could find about them. That was there. There wasn't a wide variety of different things about them. It's really just a few stories, and then. That's all, really all of it. Yeah. All the other stories are similar. Yeah. Uh, Randy also did many other outstanding works, and I would highly recommend looking to int- <clears throat> sorry, and I would highly recommend looking into him and the documentaries on him, including an honest liar. For the lazy in the show notes, I included several links uh, to some of his work, including clips from some of these shows and his hilarious TED talk. I've been a fan of Randy for years, and uh, as a tangentially related note. If you are an art fan, I would also suggest looking at Tim's Vermeer, directed by Teller and produced by Penn Jillette, available in the show notes. He also consumed, this is Randy again, a lethal dose, sorry, Randy also <laughs> consumed a lethal dose of sleeping pills on stage. Many times. His point was that homeopathic medicine uh, does nothing and should not be sold at all, let alone near actual medicine. Yeah. Uh, Oh, and the James Randy Educational Foundation also does the preliminary testing for the JREF uh, Million Dollar Challenge. Um, at the, um, uh, if you just go on their YouTube channel, they do it like a thing live in Vegas each year, and they you can see some of the uh, preliminary testing. Um, and I am by no means a fleck of dead skin on the bottom of James Randy's foot, but the timeline of Skin Rock Skin Walker Ranch does include a few red flags hey uh that being said yeah if anyone can get if anyone can get james randy on this podcast please please tell him i'd like to talk to him 
Oh, yeah. Like, I just like to talk to him. I don't know what I'd talk to him about. I would just like to talk to him. Oh, yeah. He's a cool yeah. dude. A little bit. Yeah. He's a little bit. He's a little bit uh, uh, competent. And to me, confidence is scary, but <laughs> I'd like to meet him. So, you know. he He's a living legend. No, I mean, in skeptic communities, he certainly is. Yeah. You know? No, he, he, he's fantastic. He's, uh, uh, I just can't say enough about Randy. So here is where the timeline of Skinwalker Ranch comes in. 1995, Robert Bigelow purchases Sherman Ranch. 1996, the first article of UFO Ranch is published. In 19, <laughs> whoop, whoop. 1996 again, NIDS is formed and finds an outstanding amount of UFO activity, and a significant portion describes known aircraft. 1998, Robert Bigelow starts Bigelow Aerospace. 2000, Bigelow Aerospace purchases expandable habitat modules from NASA. 2004, NIDS disbands, and 2006, Bigelow Aerospace launches its Genesis 1 module. Now... So listen, he owned UFO Ranch before that first article came out about it being a UFO thing. And I'm not a multimillionaire with a love of the paranormal and an interest in starting an aerospace company. But if I was buying a ranch, writing news articles about strange, th strange things and describing UFOs about it and starting re UFO research um, and putting it together a team that finds things that describe known aircraft... Helicopter sounds, lights taking off vertically, things flying through the sky. Um, it would be a lot of fun and also maybe drum up some interest in the area to attract investors. Uh, maybe you could even try to make it seem like you are the new Area 51. It doesn't hurt that you could also profit from maybe some trademarks, book sales, and television show, so, television show appearances. So what you're telling me is... The whole thing was fabricated. <laughs> You're telling me that this whole Bigelow. thing is literally just a like a kind of viral ad marketing campaign from the get go. Yes, like, for all intents exactly. and purposes, it's a viral ad marketing campaign. Yeah, a hundred percent. Okay, well, is all like he's trying to drum stuff up. Also, it doesn't sound like he do they do a lot of work because he hired thirteen people. I imagine while they're putting together Bigelow Airspace. I don't know how many employees they actually have, but they didn't do anything till after they just purchased an existing module from NASA. Yeah. I'm not sure how much additional work they did before, prior to launch, but it between 2000 and 2000 and s so in 2000 they launched or purchased the module from NASA in 2006, they launched Genesis 1. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of stuff in the industry, and I can tell you that six years is faster than the, you could do anything. Yeah. <laughs> like, I that's don't... not a lot of time. Well, I'm looking at their program right now, what they did with it. Yeah. Um, the Genesis program, um, yeah. it was called the Fly Your Stuff program. Uh-huh. And for $300, you could ship us a small payload to fly aboard the Genesis 2 spacecraft. We received all kinds of items, from ashes to pictures to business cards. We successfully photographed every item we flew in our orbit for our customers. Uh -huh. um, uh. They did space bingo, <laughs> uh, an orbital billboard, which is whatever, and they claimed to have the first name in space, which was Mr. Bigelow had his granddaughter's name, Flair, stitched onto the outside of the space spacecraft. So... This is not impressive. No. I mean, like, if they bought a module, right, and they just basically rented uh, space on a payload, uh huh. Like, you know, they paid for the payload. It, it just means yeah. he has money. They were they That's were literally launched... all it means. Oh and, my and gosh! Expandable they... habitat modules. I have not looked up, but to me, it sounds like an ECS, an environment control system, and like, so, so it sounds like they were just purchasing the parts, sticking them together, and shooting them into the sky. I see your face. What's happening? Okay, so I barely read the first part of it, so I reread it. Yeah. Um. So this is this is how he got it into space. They did say, all uh -huh. right. 
so I'm going to read their Genesis program oh, word, word for word. Yeah. Uh, the first demonstration of viability of expandable habitat technology. The first step in validating our architecture was to demonstrate successful deployment and expansion of the structure in low Earth orbit, which Genesis 1 and 2 both accomplished. Launch our first spacecraft in the U.S.? Not an option. Prices were too <laughs> expensive for domestic launch vehicles at the time. Mr. Bigelow was forced to look elsewhere for affordable transportation. Genesis 1 and 2, get ready for this, yeah. uh, were both launched on converted Russian ICBMs, <laughs> also known as the Defner. What? Oh. Yeah, so they literally didn't do anything. They, they, they just literally, bought stuff. They literally used an existing, uh, something that could enter low Earth orbit, which is an ICBM. They mm-hmm. bought modules and just put them on as the payload instead of a nuclear warhead, launched it into space, and took a few pictures. Yeah. That is literally all they did. Uh-huh. And I, I don't think he's doing it for... I don't know. I think he has a true interest in the paranormal in aerospace. But... <laughs> but... It sort, of, it sort of stops there at <laughs> the interest. Like, I'm looking at all his stuff, and, like, from what I can see, there's nothing that is particularly impressive to me. Um, most of it looks like, like, I, I don't know. I don't, see, I don't know enough about aerospace and about how these types of uh, modules work, but, yeah, I, I just, oh my god. <laughs> like, I, I, I kind of agree with you, though. I don't think that he's lying about his interest in any of these things but i also think that i also like he, think he's got a lot of money yeah and he wanted to do paranormal stuff and airspace stuff so he yeah. artificially started making <laughs> things <laughs> i just so also apparently um bigelow has sold the comp- has sold the ranch in t- 2016 yeah. Uh, to Adamantium Real Estate LLC. Okay. Which is clearly owned by um, uh, Logan from the X Men comics. Um, oh yeah. So, well, after uh, after Old Man Logan, he went into uh, real estate. Everyone knows that. Well, that's what happens when you became you become an old man as you get into real yeah. estate. At least if you're an old white man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So, I do want to say. Um, I do want to say calling it Skinwalker Ranch kind of makes me feel sick. Cause it's, it's, he was making a bunch of stuff, like, like all of the, like invisible chopper and people in walkie talkies and glowing lights and, and flying things that all explains like aircraft that he may have legitimately been working with at the time, but they have water babies and Cthulhu slugs. He just made that up. Why not just invent a Skinwalker to be on Skinwalker Ranch. Yeah. Right? There's literally nothing stopping him from doing that. But it's such a clear, like, case of cultural appropriation that it just... Like, it's 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 literally... So, there's certain things I'm like, oh, I don't really know if that's necessarily cultural appropriation because, you know, it's not... You know, there's certain things that are just like... Sometimes people take it too far. Yeah. But that's... Hmm, it's hard to justify that being anything but. Yeah. He's, like, literally, he's literally stealing of a Diné, bit of Diné folklore for the sake mm-hmm. of advertising, almost, it feels yeah. like. And No, I think Bigelow uh, may, may have been completely unaware of the episode or part one version of Skinwalker, he may have only been aware of the versions that, um, the, like the the like monsters and in literal transformation yeah, from but, this episode. But still, that's like I, I, I'll give him credit on that, but like it's still a little icky, is what I'm trying yeah. to say. It makes oh, me yeah. feel just a little gross, you know. Uh-huh. Not, I, 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 I don't know. I, I just, I feel like. Native Americans have gotten a really raw deal in America. Uh, yeah. And I don't think that we need to, you know, demonize their folklore any more than is necessary. Yeah. Or or 
deif or or rather i don't think that like there's something like uniquely us about taking someone else's folklore and lore and just like kind of corrupting it mm -hmm. into something that doesn't match anymore and i know that part of humankind is storytelling and stuff like that but there's something disingenuous and non-organic inorganic about this yeah and that's oh, yeah. that's what i think is my real problem it's not it's not allowing the culture to be it's saying okay that's your culture but now we're gonna throw our our twist on you mm -hmm. and some cultures that's that's more common in than not but like yeah. i think the context is important and contextually, we've kind of erased a lot of Native American culture in America. I don't know what you're talking about. Nothing bad's ever happened when we yeah. show up. Finish that sentence without laughing once. <laughs> yeah, you can't. You literally yeah. can't. So I, I, covering these Native American cryptids is always it's always a, an exercise in me becoming upset. <laughs> uh-huh because i like you know and at the same time like i would be more than happy to talk to someone who is from the culture and get their their take yeah. on it because really at the end of the day i shouldn't be getting upset for another culture right yeah like but, so we have we have because we're not in that culture we have no reason to be upset but after reading all this stuff we're like what is this shit we're like what is yeah. This is be like even we're like holy come on. Yeah, it's it's more yeah. of that than it is. I, I I would actually be interested on to, on like an inside perspective. Yeah, I would actually no like. Yeah. This is I I'm recognizing that I'm coming from a complete place of ignorance. Yeah. And a place as an outsider, I would love to see the um response of someone who's in the culture, because yeah, like I, I can talk about how I it feels like cultural appropriation all day every day. Mm -hmm. But because I'm not in the culture, I can't say. Yeah. You know, and I think that's a key thing, and context is important, and all that good stuff. And you know, it's kind of like we were talking about last episode. We talked about the Dene. It's like you know, we're all trying to just be our best, to do yeah. our best here, and trying to understand other people as much as we can. And mm -hmm. a big part of that is communication. So. Oh yeah. But like I said before, super happy to talk to anyone who wants to weigh in on it either as like like you know just even contacting us on facebook or twitter or instagram and we can just you know you can just tell us your opinion yeah and we'll if if we see it we'll relay the opinion or if it's interesting enough or valuable enough we might even do like a bonus episode or something where we talk mm -hmm. to you about it or something like that but I, I just I'm so flabbergasted that there are so few stories of actual skinwalkers. Oh yeah, it was super interesting though. Oh no, especially part one, I found super interesting because I was learning about the stuff I never knew about. Yeah. Part two is more interesting, um, because I read all of that and then I put together the timeline of when the news articles came out versus when the ranch was purchased versus yeah. when aerospace came out. And as soon as I did that, I was like. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I guess it's time for us to advertise ourselves. Woo! Let's let's pull a let's pull a, a skinwalker ranch on this one. Oh yeah. Um, so as always, if you want to get in contact with us, we have a website, uh cryptopediacast.com. Our Instagram is at cryptopediacast. I try to post episode stuff. I don't think I post anything for the last uh skinwalker episode but that's mainly because i have literally no idea what to post as a picture for the skinwalker episode. there's that there there's the cool picture of the guy the uh the blackfoot uh medicine man oh which one's that in uh episode one i want to say <clears throat> excuse me like page eight ish when we start or no probably a little bit later maybe page eight ish there's um the story about um in the trading outpost when the guy was injured and then they called oh, the skinwalker. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I'll I, I'll try to upload that. Try to remember to upload that later today. After dope. we're done recording. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And on Twitter, we're at CryptopediaCast as well. Um, not going to mention the SoundCloud because I don't touch it. Uh, <laughs> if you want to email us, you can email us at uh, CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast. 
Um, also, should note the Facebook group has kind of been hopping a little bit. I mean, we're we're the main people who post in the Facebook group, Brandon and I, and it's usually updates about how the research is going or the things that we're looking into, um, <laughs> or just links to crazy articles or like shit we found while doing research. And we're like, I can't. I have to share this. <laughs> yeah, it, a lot of the time it's like I, I can't wait two three weeks to tell people about this thing yeah um so yeah if you're interested you can join um you can offer us suggestions stuff like that talk to us um and we'll try to get back to you when we can Mm -hmm. um we also have a patreon Woohoo! uh i think it's about time we thank our jackalopes uh again um thanks again clay sinclair clay sinclair Uh, been a big supporter for a while now yeah, man. Jackalope uh, tier. Yeah, first Jackalope too. Um, yeah, man. And then we, you know, I know we don't have this as a uh, as a thing, but uh, we've got our our Hodag listener. We got some new Hodags as well. Um, and just want to say thank you. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, your guys' contributions are allowing us to continue to host the podcast. Oh, yeah. And just as a uh, refresher... We've got the uh, uh, hoop snakes, one dollars. That's a thank you. We just thank you for your support, man. That that that's really it. It's just here's a buck. We take that, put it toward web services and fucking doing research and buying source materials, mm-hmm. books and the such. Um, then we've got the hoed eggs, which is the two dollar tier, and with that you gain the uh, the episode copies. We mm-hmm. do full write ups for all this stuff. We include pictures and links and videos and comments on stuff. That's always fun. I think in the Facebook group, I took a screenshot of one portion of um, the yep. Oaring Pendek. Uh, sure did. Copy and post it in there. And then we've got the Jackalopes, which is the $5 a month tier. You get all of the lower levels, which means you get the um, the red ups. But you also get bonus content that we record when we somehow find free time. Which uh, apparently you find more free time than I do. I don't. But <laughs> it's it's hard. But we, we've got, uh, let's see, we've got, you read some, um, uh, I don't even know what to call it. Uh, I, icky pasta. Icky pasta. The the first one was icky pasta. I might do some creepy pasta. I got some ideas for some uh-huh. things I'm going to try. Um, mainly, I'm just kind of throwing pasta at the wall to see what sticks. Yeah. Uh, some of it's creepy, some of it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have uh, a totally legitimate relationship advice uh, oh my gosh. column. The one we, uh, the one we released Lover's on, Lane. on January 25th was so good. Oh. Yeah. I still had to listen to the newest one you made, which that's a spoil. I guess that's a spoiler. There's another one coming soon. I think, yep. I think I'm... I just this morning while I was uh, at the barbershop found a, uh, a forum where I have another one uh, that I just got an idea for. And save that, but we have what do we have? We have all the beans, all the shallots. I uh, um, I'm looking all the dookie, all the dookie, all the horses, all the horses. That's and the. We've got another one in the bank. I think I'm gonna release yeah. that on our Patreon on uh, this week actually that this releases. Okay, so don't because that's Valentine's Day and oh, I think it, what that better is one for the romantics? Yeah, what better time to release a po- release a podcast on relationship advice than Valentine's Day? Oh yeah. Um so that'll be fun. Uh-huh. Uh yeah, and um I think we got some Brandon, you've you've done some video content. Yeah. Uh that we're we're kind of we're playing around with some ideas a little bit and I've got some stuff that I'm going to try out and we'll probably post it to the Patreon to for the uh the the Jackalope tier first and then mm-hmm. as time progresses I think I might migrate it to the YouTube as well. Like as like, I, I, it might. Yeah, it, it's gonna be one of those we release it to uh, the people Patrons who support first. us first. Like mm-hmm. it'd probably be staged so Jackalopes get it like a day early, then Hodags get it, and then um, we decide when we release it to the general public. So yeah, I think um, that's a good idea. I think we should put more stuff on YouTube. Yeah, I yeah yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna we got some stuff in the works. Um, mm-hmm. we still have a on-site visit and I'm actually, I'm actually working on one that's in our, own, our backyard right now. 
Um, like your literal backyard or your metaphorical backyard? Our metaphorical backyard. Okay. I'm, I just reached out to some people. Um, okay. I'll I'll talk about it a little bit more as I get closer to it, and um, I'll definitely tell you before I tell the listeners. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I've got some ideas that I'm working on. Um, and, we're, you know, because we're, because we're getting a little bit more money – uh, mm-hmm. from the Patreon. I mean, it's still not, like, a game changer, but it allows us to do a little bit more. So Yeah, some more freedom. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we're going to we're gonna try some stuff out. Oh, so. hell yeah. Yeah. If you'd like, you could find me on Instagram at Instagram.com slash donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. You can go there for some guitar stuff. My email is Brandon at CryptopediaCast.com. My Twitter is at CryptoBrandon, capital C, capital B. And Bandcamp? I put out a, a song with some uh, James Randi uh, samples in it. You could also go to, I think we've got it at the bottom of CryptopediaCast.com. I might stick that at the end of the episode or something like that. But, uh, yeah. yeah, as time permits, I had a double this week, a, a double episode <clears throat> so i had some extra time that wasn't dedicated strictly to research so i did a little something extra for everybody yeah i added it under i added a link to that underneath brandon's little profile on the cryptic mm-hmm. cast website so if you hit that play button you can hear uh psych ish yeah it's psych-ish. pretty good i love it i'm not gonna it's got lie. james randy in it man and it's got james randy and peter Popoff and oh, oh. i i was i was stunned when you when you played it like you yeah. first posted the original bits to Facebook, and I was just yeah. like, this is phenomenal. I can't wait to hear the rest. <laughs> um, cool. Thank you. So uh, for me, if you want to get in contact with me, I'm on Instagram, at Mew2057. Been posting a lot of Battletech stuff lately. Yeah, Battletech and 3D printed copper uh, bases for them. Yeah. So the, the... – I'll talk about that next episode. Um, I got some stuff to talk about. Uh, so on Twitter, I'm at JF Dunham. My website is still dead. I'm probably never going to fix that unless I start looking for a job. Um, <laughs> and you can email me at john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on... In- in- <laughs> 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 wanna, Our wanna, art okay. was done by Thomas Hill. You could find him... On Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. Um, and as always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. <laughs>
many people in our audience tonight can connect with the name Taylor? About 30%. And now, how many people can relate to the condition of the grandfather? Hmm, about 55%. Well, that's very interesting. Make of that what you will. It's a problem. I mean, this is good-natured fun. Well, because it's a very dangerous thing to believe in nonsense. First thing you know, you're giving your money to the charlatans, you're giving your emotional security, and in some cases, you're giving your life to them. Throw them up there on the stage. You don't have to leave with those pills. He had people who were on Throw medication, necessary Don't medication, like nitroglycerin tablets for a heart attack, digitalis, insulin. He had them come out of the audience and throw their pills up on stage. Throw them up there! That's a blow of defeat for the devil. As you see it, this is the real danger in all the pain. I'm afraid it's easier to become silly now because uh, we have access to nonsense. much faster and in full color. More Americans believe in psychic power than in evolution. The Indians Foundation has put up one million dollars as a prize. Anyone who can prove they have paranormal abilities. A million dollars. It's in the bank. We check. If they say they can defy gravity, step over to the window there and step out. And if, it's, if you don't fall, hey, you win. You win.